All right, so Nick Merckx has done something stupid again. We're going to look back at what he said last year uh, that got him in hot water, but he's back spreading across the internet like a plague again with this clip from a live stream during Pride Month, so obviously people are picking up on it and spreading it out. And he once again said something really dumb. There's a follow-up clip to this. We're going to watch that as well. So there's a lot to unpack here. But ultimately, I want to know what you guys think about this as well. So make sure you go down in the comments below and leave your thoughts and opinions on this. I'm going to give my thoughts on this. Let's watch the clip, get the context of the clip, and then talk about it. Nick, the transphobe struggling against the trans gay. There's no such thing as trans people. That's something that you created. So have fun with your little dreamland. But that shit's not even real. They break it down for you, right? Penis, dude. Vagina, girl, done. And there we go. That is the clip. There's a little bit more at the end there, but it's got some cursing in it, so we're not gonna we're not gonna go there. Anyway, so the gist of this, he's playing Elden Ring, he's fighting uh, Melania, and somebody comes in and says, "Oh, you know, it's funny you're fighting against this like trans icon character um, being a transphobe," and it triggers him. He gets triggered. He takes the bait and he starts saying a bunch of dumb stuff. When someone's live and they respond to something like this, it truly shows who they are at their core when they're not like hyper edited or filtered or whatever. We know this again, it's happened before, it'll happen again. Uh, but this is not the first time that Nick has done something. And the last time he was in hot water, uh, it wasn't from a live stream. So here was the first thing that happened. This happened June of last year, almost exactly two the day. I mean, this is really close. I'm not sure exactly when that live stream was, but it's very close here. Um, so this is back in June. It says anti-LGBT protesters attack pro-LGBT demonstrators outside of Glendale, California school board meeting. The school board is voting on recognizing June as Pride Month. And then Chris Puckett here goes, this happened four blocks from my Overwatch League apartment. Americans are in a sad place right now. Let people uh, love who they love and live your own life. And then uh, Nick chimes in here. They should leave little children alone. That's the real problem. You know, spreading that fallacy argument that's constantly used against queer people at all, at every turn. At every turn it is used against queer people. So the fact that he spouted this out, you know, he got called out by a bunch of people. I think he lost a skin. Yeah, so Call of Duty removed the Twitch streamer Nick Merck's character skin over bigoted comments. So there was backlash to this um, pretty quickly. It happened pretty quickly, within a few days. Of, of the actual tweet being posted and shared around on the internet. So he is no stranger to this kind of controversy. Um, but he's done a follow-up video. We're going to watch that, and then I'm going to give my thoughts on all of this. People that disagree and people that agree, I don't care about the percentages or the cuts or whatever. I, I, it doesn't bother me. You know, I, I feel a certain way about all that. And I've said my piece, and I will remind these fucking people that – Again, the little dream fantasy bullshit that they're living in is not real life. And not everybody has to dance to their tune. That's not how. So I'm, I'm going to pause it there for a second. I do want to interject here for a second. It's very weird to me when people who make a living in a fantasy world, this is what they do for a living. They play video games and stream that for a living. It's something they do. For them to have so much animosity towards other people who they say are living in a fantasy world is such a strange thing to try and, and digest and rationalize. Like the simple fact that other people are doing what they want with their lives, whether it's fantasy or not, whether they want to dress in cosplay, whether they want to paint their face, whatever somebody else wants to do, the amount of anger and spite and, and and all those feelings that come from other individuals who are not part of that community is completely unwarranted. It's completely unwarranted. Uh, let's just continue here. How that works. You don't get to go around and point your finger in people's chests and say, hey, you live in my world. You think the way that I think. You believe the way that I believe. No, no, no. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. It, it, it never has been and it never will be. So... So you want to do that to them, though. You, you're saying to you personally that trans people live in a fantasy world. And you want to go around and point at them and remind them that they don't live in that, that that world is not real. You want to do that. You want to remind them they're living in your world. But you're too stupid to rationalize that. 
You just can't get it. So for you, it feels like some sort of attack that other people are living their lives the way they want. They have to live their life the way Nick Merck wants them to live it, or he's going to, at every single turn, remind you that what you're doing is not valid. You're not a valid human being. You have to live your life the way that Nick Merck wants you to. Um, they don't even comprehend that they are projecting the same thing that they are accusing other people of doing because somehow in their mind, they have processed that other people living their lives is an attack on them. And it's simply because of insecurity. And we'll talk about that in a second. If you guys want to live like that, go ahead. Do, do what you want to do. Not me. And I don't. Nobody's asking you to. That's the thing. No one is saying that Nick Merckx has to be gay. Nobody's saying that Nick Merckx has to be trans. Nobody's saying that. So you can't tell people, oh, you can do whatever you want, and but I'm going to keep telling you that you're fake, that you're not valid, that you're not real. That That's not letting people live their lives. That's not what that means. Letting them live their, live their lives would mean not constantly saying stuff on social media. And the thing is that this clip that was uh, captured, people are saying this isn't the only time he said some dumb shit like this. So I believe there's probably more out there. There's probably live streams where he said stuff that, that you know, has, has been off the cuff against queer people. I, I, I truly believe it. I don't need people to agree with me. I don't need no echo chamber bullshit. This is the way that my wife and I feel. This is the way that my family feels. The people that are closest to me. And we're going to speak our fucking peace. And that's it. And it might be a thing that goes around, you know, like, look, I, it's June. I get it, man. Everybody's like, woo. I mean, I don't fucking care. People that disagree. So, okay. Let me, let me just sort of uh, give my overall thoughts on this. Now that we're at the end of the video here, I don't have an issue with people feeling a certain kind of way. I don't have an issue with people in their individual lives, feeling a certain kind of way or living their life the way they want to. I don't understand, I don't get it, I guess, how it is that me living my life the way that I want to is somehow impeding on Nick Merckx. How is that affecting Nick Merckx specifically? Because you're talking about Pride Month and you're talking about a month where queer people are recognized. I could point at hundreds and hundreds of holidays around the world that celebrate people for their differences and recognize people for their differences for one reason or another. None of those things do I feel like is an attack on me personally. I don't think that Christian holidays are an attack on me. When we have Christmas for two months of the year, basically, I don't think that's an attack. I don't think it's making me do anything. I, 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 I don't think any of that. When I see churches and people going to church, I don't feel like that's a personal attack on me. When I see straight people in public kissing and holding hands, existing in TV shows and movies. I don't think that is an attack on me as a gay person. When I see trans people in movies and TV shows and out existing in the world, I don't think that's an attack on me as a cisgender person. Keep in mind, he was triggered about a joke in his chat about him being a transphobe and then proceeds to say transphobic stuff. The fact that that doesn't even ding a light bulb in his head tells me that this is not a serious person, that this guy, Nick Merckx, is very uninformed about gender and identity and all of these other things. And now we're going to wrap this up with the insecurity stuff. There's an insecurity with people who feel like they are tricked in society. And what I mean by that is this whole idea, this insult that, that trans people or, or gender non-conforming people are somehow a trap for cisgender men. There's this idea that that is the case, that if they see someone out in the public uh, dressed as a woman, whatever that may be, whether it be drag or trans or someone who is a non-conforming, gender fluid, non-binary, whatever it is, if that person is not specifically labeled correctly according to nick or the guys that feel this way they feel as if they are being tricked somehow they are insecure because they want to be able to objectify individuals based on their gender he wants to be able to look at someone and in his mind know immediately whether they have a vagina or a penis 
So in his mind, his very rudimentary, like caveman mind, he has to know that that person that he's talking about has a vagina because it reaffirms him as a straight man and as a cisgender person, because there's a level of insecurity there. And this is why we have so many trans crimes out there with men hooking up with women and assuming so many things about their body without even having a conversation with them about it beforehand. So the objectification means that they do not even have a conversation about anything else ahead of time. They just assume immediately. And because that entire concept, the idea of gender and the gender construct that we live in, the binary that we live in, that entire concept has pretty much sculpted society for them. And they don't even realize that. They don't even understand that. They, it's just ignorance. It's ignorance and insecurity. And that is a dangerous combination when it comes to living in the world with other people. No, Nick, you don't have to be a trans person. You don't have to be a gay person. You don't have to hang out with trans people. You don't have to hang out with gay people. But when you go on camera in front of like, what do you got, like 10 million people uh, keeping up with your social media and stuff. When you go out on that platform and you say things like what you said in your stream and you make comments like you've made on Twitter about this, when you say those things, they carry a level of weight to them. And there's a bit of responsibility behind that. So we're talking about an irresponsible, ignorant, insecure person who is making these comments to a bunch of impressionable people. That is dangerous. They don't understand it. And it's very frustrating because you want people to respect you as a person and respect the way you feel about things, but your point of view is not passive. Your point of view is aggressive. You don't want trans people to be trans because you have called it fake, but you also want people to respect the fact that you feel the way you feel. Do you understand how those two viewpoints are conflicting with each other? They don't make sense, Nick Merckx, and the people that believe this are part of the problem, a big part of the problem.